So I was taking the new media seminar at Virginia Tech, uh, where I, this is where I first came in contact with Google Glass, and we were reading a, an article by Vannevar Bush, I think it was 1945, called As We May Think, and in the um, article there's a, a picture of a, of a computer a camera on someone's head. This is 1945, um, and the article also talks about wearable computers and um, voice-activated control. And after looking around for about 10 minutes, I found Google Glass and online, and the, the, the Google Glass Explorer program was about two days from being closed. And I created a Google Plus account and, and said if I, have a, if I had a glass, I would use it to transform the way I teach and do research, something like that. For me, the, the most unexpected part of using Google Glass is the sort of networks I'm building um, around the use of the device. So I have a, a, a nice relationship with, with faculty that is developing who are, who are fellow Google Glass explorers, and um, we're just sort of brainstorming uh, ideas of how we can use the device. Uh, it's also fun to work with, uh, I've got some clip-ons here, some prescription clip-ons. So I've been working with a number of uh, people who provide glass services uh, and, and labs who can make these clip-ons. And that's been a great experience to, to kind of engage with, with very different people who I would never have, have engaged with without this, without this device. In the program for about a month or two, I got an uh, invitation from Google to invite three friends to join me. And so I thought about it for a while. And decided to invite a faculty of Virginia Tech into the program who are uh, doing different things than I. We have a team of about 10 faculty here, and it covers planning, computer science, music, art, uh, human interaction with technology. So we have a really good team that's developing, and I think that would just keep snowballing. We're trying to be very intentional and very kind of deliberate on, on how we bring in and build this sort of cohort or this network of, of faculty uh, stretching into different disciplines. And so it was really uh, an honor and, and, and kind of exciting for me to represent the library in that mix. I, mean, I, I didn't know where I would use it, to be honest. And it's a new device. And, um, what I've decided is I use it professionally, um, not socially at this point, um, which basically means right now uh, I use it to, to, to record things which I then provide to my class. So in terms of the actual classroom, I don't wear it right now in the classroom. I really only wear it when there's value to be added um, to what I'm doing. So an example would be um, I'll, I'll talk to somebody who's an expert in, in an idea, such as binary economics or post-development, and I'll basically interview them like you're interviewing me now, maybe for about four minutes, um, and then post that video to the, the student forum, and then in that forum is discussed. Um, another thing I do is each week I scan um, The Economist, Time Magazine, and a few other places, and pull out articles that are relevant to the topic we're talking about that week. I'll then um, upload those to a Google Drive that I've set up for my class, and scroll through the readings and tell the students where to focus while recording that, that with this device. And so you know, focus on this part of this article, and this is why this is important. And, um, give them the sort of a four-minute, three or four-minute discussion of why they should read the articles that I posted that week and the relevance, like why why are they relevant articles. Um, I've also been recording videos of me giving students feedback. One of the things that I did was put all of the assignments uh, up on Google Drive, so when they so I put the assignment up and then they respond and post their response to Google Drive. So I can edit and, and sort of correct and, or mark up or whatever I want to do to the document. And they can see me do it. So if they're online at the same time, they can challenge what I'm saying. Um, and when I'm done grading it, I basically record a video of why they got the grade they got. So the, the classroom setting, you know, I've had a, a number of students kind of indicate that when, when it comes affordable, they love to be able to kind of record their classes as you're kind of doing that, and to be able to kind of see an instructor kind of working through a problem, or uh, when an important part comes up, when they're saying, this will be on the test, you know, being able to kind of record that, you know, in real time. So I think that's, that's a piece now that, that sinking in sort of the, 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 the visual and the verbal together 
uh, and to be able to uh, to kind of share that amongst uh, you know classmates as well is is, is probably the, the near term advantages we see in class. Some of the, the near term changes that will happen is once this device comes out uh, for the average person to buy, um, it will you'll see it in the classroom. And so you, you'll have this dynamic of where you'll be teaching students and, and they could be recording you, right? And they could be posting that online. So there'll be a whole new era where we have to be conscious of, of that. And that, that's going to change the dynamic in the classroom, perhaps. Um, in the same way that if you wear glass socially, um, if people don't know anything about it or, or are very conscious of being recorded or having pictures taken of themselves, they may change the, the dynamic again in your social relationships. So, I think that's going to be the biggest near-term uh, impact where there's a sort of uncertainty around what's happening you know, with, with this class. I'm actually recording you right now, um, whether you knew that or not. Uh, and so, see, now you've shifted. You, you, you know, your, your body language has shifted. You've crossed your arms, right? And so th it does change the dynamic of, of relationships. And so I think near-term, there's going to be a, a learning sort of curve where we all try to figure out what this device is, where, it, where it's appropriate to use it, where it's not appropriate to use it. Should we ban it from the classroom? Should we embrace it in the classroom? These are questions that we're really going to have to think through uh, very carefully.